Questions about body image often lead to eating disorders, and it's not just a problem for teenage girls. As I found out during a recent visit to the Eating Disorders Clinic at Children's Hospital Colorado, doctors there treat kids as young as six years old. The eating disorder was a secret. It was something that only I knew. It was third grade, the first time I ever threw up. Both 18-year-old Cassie and 13-year-old Zach had a hard time realizing they had eating disorders. My teacher thought, like, for sure, like, I was sick. Like, I needed to go home, but I felt something different. I felt a voice inside my head telling me to throw up. When Zach got to middle school, his parents noticed something was wrong. It was in seventh grade. I was hiding food and I was throwing up on purpose and they knew that those were eating disorder behaviors so they started taking me to therapy for it. It was actually Thanksgiving probably two years ago. Cassie first realized she had a problem while visiting relatives. The day of Thanksgiving I was exercising in secret a lot. Um, I realized that when it came to like Thanksgiving dinner time, I put nothing on my plate. I just, I put a little few things on there just to smear it to make it look like I ate something and then I just threw it away and then I kind of realized that that wasn't normal. What was it that made you say, okay, I need to go get some help? My parents actually were the ones to say that. I didn't believe that I had an eating disorder. How much of the outside, whether it's media, whether social media, magazines, TVs, movies, versus peer pressure, does this play a role for you guys? A really big part um, because, you know, in the media there's always like those um, weight loss commercials and those like dieting pills and all those things that you can do to lose weight and um, things that are saying that you should do this in order to have a perfect body and this will make a guy fall in love with you. You hear people sometimes, they'll make flippant comments where they'll say something along the lines of, you know, oh, I wish I just had an eating disorder so I wouldn't eat. How does that make you feel when you hear something like that? An eating disorder isn't just not eating food. It's like exercising. It's throwing up on purpose. Like It's like doing stuff that normal humans wouldn't do. I just want them to know um, to be like empathetic and to not use it as a joke. It's painful, isn't it? I was texting my friend one night and I'm like, I have an eating disorder. And then he told me like, so did you go like to treatment and eat like 30 Big Macs and that like broke my heart. What was the road to recovery? I mean, what was it like for you? Um, it was, it's, it was really hard. Um, it's, I'm still working on it and it, um, I like to say that it does get easier. It does at some point um, and I know that but I'm not quite there yet. I don't have any thoughts of throwing up or doing anything to my body. I'm just going to eat because it's healthy and it's what people do. You just have to keep trying and that, you know, no matter what, you can't give up because the second that you give up, the eating disorder will swoop back in and will can take control of your life just like that. Wow, I think the hardest thing as a parent watching that is we can't love it away. No. You need professional help to mm -hmm. deal with things like this, right, Dale? But it's key with the parents to notice these things, really see what's happening with your child. And if you notice any big changes, that's when you need to start asking questions. It was very interesting talking to the doctor because she said, ask questions. She goes, if you're wrong, they'll tell you that you're wrong. And if not, they'll tell you, they'll feel that they can open up and they can actually talk to you. So either way, they're saying this is a really good thing for dialogue between parents and kids. Well, and then learning what that dialogue should be because as uh, maybe a parent that's never dealt with it, what words do you use? What What is healthy? Mm -hmm. What is not healthy? And, and learning how to probably process that and talk to them about it. Well, it is difficult because you do think about it. We talk about so much, you know, telling our kids, don't eat that candy, don't eat this because it's not healthy for you. But at the same time, some of that stuff is good. That is what living life is and eating in moderation. So our words do really impact our kids and we have to be very careful about it. You know, both Cassie and Zach, who you just saw there, work with Dr. Mindy Solomon at Children's Hospital Colorado. And I asked her what warning signs friends and family should look for. As a parent, how do you, what do you watch for? What are the signs that we need to be on the lookout for? So definitely concern about you know, changes any kind of changes in in eating patterns, right? You want to be curious about that as a parent. Doesn't mean that it's bad um, necessarily, but you want to be curious about it and you want to keep your eye on it. Certainly, if it gets to the point of any kind of mood changes, behavior changes, um, withdrawal from social engagements, not wanting to participate with friends, not wanting to go to certain restaurants, um, things like that. 
you're going to want to be concerned as a parent. And I think um, one of the other misconceptions is that, you know, I, I think parents that see the extreme of an eating disorder think, well, that's not going to happen. Um, but it, it kind of sneaks up on you because a lot of these behaviors, especially in our society, are pretty sanctioned and celebrated. And so I don't know a lot of parents personally who if their you know, 13 or 14 year old came home and said, hey mom, I'm gonna cut out sweets, would be upset about that. You know, there's, they're likely to encourage that. There's a healthy balance. Um, and it's hard to know when it becomes off balance and when it kind of slips into a zone of compulsion and um, anxiety driven of I can't do this or I can't fix that. So what I would say to parents is um, don't be afraid to ask a lot of questions. You know, don't be afraid to conjecture and be wrong. It's much better to conjecture and be wrong because your child is either, if you're right, then your child's gonna feel validated and safe to kind of share their concern. If you're wrong, they're going to correct you and they're gonna to talk to you. So either way, it's win-win. They love to correct you, definitely. <laughs> all, and in this case, that's what you yes, want. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm just starting out with a three and four year old, and I'm noticing already how different they are and approaching it with different kids. One might have, have one issue and one body type, another has a different uh, thing going on, and that can be really challenging. Yeah, that is too. so true. Yeah.